Who are the biggest sleepers in 2021 fantasy football? Let's take a look. Number one, Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback, Washington football team. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been many things for many teams. The Washington football team is the ninth for which the 16 year NFL veteran will start. He has long been an inspiration for any of us who aspire to grow a beard that Santa himself would envy. Now Fitzpatrick has the potential to not only make the playoffs for the first time in his career, but to also be one of fantasy football's biggest steals under center. Yes, Fitzpatrick has yet to officially be anointed the starter in the Washington in 2021, but unless his right arm falls off at some point during the preseason, he's going to be orchestrating the first team offense when the WTF hosts the Los Angeles Chargers in week one. Assuming that's the case, Fitzpatrick will guide an offense that isn't hurting for weapons. There's Terry McLaurin and newcomer Curtis Samuel at wide receiver, Logan Thomas at tight end, Antonio Gibson at running back, and an offensive line that finished the 2020 season ranked sixth in the league per PFF. Also, while it has gone largely unnoticed by most fantasy managers, when Fitzpatrick has been out there in his recent seasons, he has the most assuredly been fantasy relevant. Per Ian Hiertitz of PFF, Fitzpatrick has peeled off stretches of QB1 play in each of the past three seasons in Tampa and Miami. According to Mike Tangelier of Fantasy Pros, Fitzpatrick has posted QB1 numbers in 18 of his last 37 games, nearly 50%. Last year, there were 10 quarterbacks who cracked the top 12 in at least half their starts. Fitzpatrick is an excellent late round target for teams that fade the quarterback position early. It's nothing. I mean, I think we just have to stay humble, you know, and <laughs> we got to make sure we know how to handle success and all those things. Uh, so we can't change who we are. Number two, Tua Tagovailoa, quarterback Miami Dolphins. There was a time not so long ago when Tua Tagovailoa was the highest regarded quarterback prospect in his class. He was a can't-miss superstar in the making. NFL teams were going to tank for Tua. Then came the dislocated hip that ended his collegiate career. In a pedestrian rookie season in which Tagovailoa averaged just 181.4 passing yards per game and threw only 11 touchdowns and 9 starts. If Tagovailoa were to fly any farther under the radar, he'd be off it completely. He's barely being drafted inside QB2 territory in 12-team fantasy leagues. However, there are a few reasons to think Tagovailoa is undervalued, that last year's struggle were more temporary setback than true indicator of what Tagovailoa can do. The first is simple. Last year, Tagovailoa was coming off a major injury and got zero training camp or preseason reps as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Instead of being surprised that Tagovailoa had a rocky first season, maybe we should have been surprised that he didn't struggle more. Now Tua has a year of experience under his belt, he's another year removed from the injury, and as Barry Jackson reported for the Miami Herald, Tagovailoa said he's very comfortable in Miami's offense. Being able to get the guys throughout the offseason has helped me tremendously, Tagovailoa said. Tua's scrambling ability should be improved in 2021. After Miami added Will Fuller V and Jalen Waddle, his passing game weapons certainly are. There's considerable fantasy upside to be had here on the cheap. Number 3. Philip Lindsay running back Houston Texans Just two years ago, Lindsay looked like the future of the backfield for the Denver Broncos. The undrafted free agent out of Colorado topped 1,000 rushing yards in each of his first two seasons. But then the Broncos signed Melvin Gordon III, and Lindsey spent much of the 2020 season banged up. By the time the 2021 offseason rolled around, Denver elected to rescind the tender on Lindsey, who eventually signed with the Houston Texans. According to Matt Young of the Houston Chronicle, Lindsey said the way things played out in Denver left him champing at a bit to show the Broncos made a mistake. Oh, I have a big chip on my shoulder. For me, I feel like I'm always being disrespected. I'm going to go out there and show it. In my head, I'm the baddest dude there is, period. I don't care who else is in the NFL or anything like that. You've still got to deal with me. That's just how I act, but it's not about me. It's about our team. That's all I care about. As long as we're winning games and stuff like that, accolades will come as time goes along. It's about team. It's about winning. As is the case with every fancy running back draft in the double-digit rounds, Lindsey faces substantial questions. The overall state of the Texans as a team and the presence of David Johnson on the depth chart, chief among them. Worst case, Lindsey is going to significantly eat into Johnson's workload. Best case, he'll take the lead job and, pardon the pun, run with it. Number 4. Damian Williams Running Back Chicago Bears Judging from ADP data, it isn't hard to figure out how fancy drafters have been approaching the Chicago Bears backfield. David Montgomery is the no bout number one back. There appears to be significant skepticism that Montgomery can repeat last year's career season and RB6 finish in PPR leagues. But the third year pro is still being drafted as a higher end second starter in the third round of the drafts. Then there's pass catching back Terry Cohen, who made it just three games into the 2020 campaign before tearing his ACL. Despite reports that Cohen could still be weeks away from returning to practice in full, he's still being drafted nearly two rounds ahead of free agent acquisition Damian Williams, who joined the Bears after opting out of the 2020 season while with the Kansas City Chiefs. That could be about to change, as Patrick Finley reported for the Chicago Sun Times, Williams has stood out on the practice field with the Bears. The last time Damian Williams played in a game, Finley said he should have been named Super Bowl MVP. 
After a year off, he doesn't seem to have lost a step. With Cohen out, Williams has seized his opportunity to be a mismatch nightmare in the past game. He's very well-rounded, Nagy said. It's just a really good fit for a running back room. The 29-year-old has shown he can produce, and if this continues at the very least, Williams could upsurp Cohen as the Bears change of pace back. Number 5. Boston Scott running back Philadelphia Eagles That's right, there are 62 running backs listed ahead of Boston Scott on Fantasy Football's calculator ADP chart for the position. A week ago, he was off the list altogether. The times, as they say, are a-changing. Per Elliott Shore Parks, the 94 WIP radio in Philadelphia, over the first seven Eagles practice sessions, starting running back Miles Sanders has had 35 total touches, Scott had 29. I think Sanders and Scott could end up basically splitting touches this season, Shore Parks tweeted. Scott had been great in the passing game. Fantasy managers have significant expectations for Sanders in 2021. He's being drafted as a top 20 running back and coming off the board at the back end of a round three on average. But durability has been an issue for the third year pro from Penn State, who missed four games in 2020. It's not difficult to imagine a scenario in which the Eagles limit Sanders' workload and effort to keep him on the field, or a scenario in which Sanders gets nicked up and misses time. And as things stand at present, it's Scott and not rookie Kenneth Gainwell who stands to benefit. Number 6. Michael Gallup, wide receiver, Dallas Cowboys Two years ago, Michael Gallup had a coming out party. 66 catches on 113 targets for 1,107 yards and 6 TDs. The 25-year-old finished that season as a top 30 fantasy receiver and appeared headed for a bright future. Then the Cowboys drafted C.D. Lamb, and quarterback Dak Prescott got hurt. Gallup's numbers dipped to 59, 843, and 5 in 2020, and this summer he is all but a fancy afterthought, with an ADP of wide receiver 5. That's a mistake, or an opportunity for value, depends on how you look at it. Even in the midst of last year's supposedly awful season, Gallup still finished 36th in PPR fantasy points, close to 20 slots higher than where he was being drafted. Even with Lamb and Amari Cooper on the roster, Gallup was still targeted over 100 times. Prescott will be back in 2021 as the team's third wide receiver, Gallup is going to see a ton of single coverage. Gallup is something of the poster dude for the late round depth available at wide receiver in fancy drafts. Number 7. Amon Ross St. Brown, Wide Receiver, Detroit Lions Let's see, how to be delicate about this. The wide receiver situation in Detroit is hot garbage. After watching both Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones Jr. leave in free agency, the Lions were staring at a ground up rebuild at the position. What the teams wound up with isn't striking fear into the hearts of opposing defensive backs. The team's top two wide receivers in 2021 are a pair of wholly underwhelming veterans in Tyrell Williams and Brashard Perryman. The Lions also added USC's Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round of the 2021 draft, and the youngsters wasted no time making a positive impression on its new coaches. I like him, offensive coordinator Anthony Lynn said, per Kyle Mink of M Live. I like him. He's tough, man. He'll get in there and mix it up. He's great route savvy. He's doing a good job. St. Brown is seeing a lot of time in the slot, as Frank DeVeach wrote for Roto Baller. That could mean big things given Jared Goff's prosperity for throwing shorter passes over the middle. Goff has made a living off of targeting the slot receiver. Tight end TJ Hawkinson figures to be the primary weapon in the passing game, and running back DeAndre Swift will be used plenty. But the other receivers on the roster are Tyrell Williams, Brashard Perryman, and Kintez Cephas, and they all play on the outside. Goff will usually throw the ball to any receiver who is wide open because he does not like to throw into tight coverage, and that bodes very well for St. Brown. St. Brown won't be the number one rookie receiver in 2021, with the likes of people like Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith, but he's going to finish a lot higher on the list than where he was drafted at. Number 8. John Brown, Wide Receiver, Las Vegas Raiders there may not be a late round wide receiver that I'm targeting with more enthusiasm than John Brown of the Las Vegas Raiders. Per B.D. Williams of Silver and Black Pride, Brown said it was an easy decision to join the Raiders in the offseason because he wanted to play with quarterback Derek Carr. Who would I like to play for? And when I was in Buffalo, he said, watching Derek Carr play last year and seeing that style of offense, I fell in love with it right then and there I wanted to be a part of it. It should be an equally easy decision to target Brown late in the draft. For starters, we've seen that the 31-year-old can put up numbers. Brown has eclipsed 1,000 receiving yards twice, including as recently as 2019 with the Bills. That year, Brown was a top 15 fantasy option in the PPR scoring system. Also, the Raiders' depth chart at the position isn't exactly loaded. Tight end Darren Waller is the unquestioned top target in the Sin City passing attack, but young wideout Henry Ruggs III didn't exactly light up the league as a rookie in 2020. It's not at all implausible for Brown, and not Ruggs, to emerge as the top wide receiver for the Raiders in 2021. If that's the case, wide receiver 3 numbers are an absolutely attainable goal. And getting the third starter essentially for free is how fancy drafts are won. Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to Tip Top Sports, 
and ring that notification bell so that you never miss out on any of our videos. If there's any sleepers that we missed, let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.